Hey guys, I'm meteorologist Chris Tomer. Let's talk some mountain weather, and we are right in the middle of this major storm cycle. We've got two, maybe three additional storm systems left in this series, depending on whether we get a merger at the end, and I'll explain what all that means. But let's take a uh, look right now. It's snowing and blowing up in the, uh, the Wasatch there in Utah. Full parking lot. This is Brighton up there in Big Cottonwood. Uh, but you can see it there snowing and blowing on the left, full parking lot on the right. Um, I've also got, uh, let's look at Alta here. Yep, heavy snow there up in Little Codwood, Snowbird Alta. Uh, this is going to be a good one. Powder day today, powder day tomorrow. In fact, it may snow <laughs> at times all the way through uh, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day at some of these places. There's Wolf Creek. Wolf Creek reporting 42 inches in the last four days, and I think we could easily get that much or more through Friday, Saturday. So we may end up with 80 to 90 inch totals, grand totals at Wolf Creek and, and potentially an 80 inch grand total up at uh, Crested Butte and down at Silverton. Um, Aspen Snowmass could end up with 60, 70 inch grand total. I mean, uh, all these places were in the bullseye uh, when I was looking at this at the start, the onset of this, the 23rd, 24th and through the evolution and then the final end around the first second of the new year. I mean, some of these grand totals are just going to be absolutely incredible. And here's what we have remaining on this. The big picture over the Pacific, you can see it two to three lows, depending again how the final one to two actually come together. Um, but you can see the storm track big dip off the West Coast. And it all started with that giant trough that ran was running like three standard deviations below the 30-year average for, as far as pressures, lower pressures. That's what kicked all this off, allowed all this energy to start to ride the jet, come up over the top, and then hit the West Coast. And then now we're just seeing all these storms getting pushed into the interior, Utah, Wyoming, Montana, Idaho, and Colorado, and northern New Mexico. You're in for one, two feet of snow here over the next uh, few days. So... Uh, into the uh, the new year, I should say. So that is, uh, we're looking good on that front. Let's go to um, the future position of this on the model. And this is the GFS, American Model Interpretation. Um, let me roll into Tuesday morning. So Tuesday morning, you've got some snow through Colorado, through parts of Utah, and uh, along the West Coast. Now into Wednesday morning, um, we start to see some important things. There's a big low off the West Coast, uh, you've got some leftover snow through Colorado. It's very light. But take note of this. Okay, here's the important inflection point. So this is Thursday, the 30th. There are two features, the Pacific Northwest low and also a low off the southwest part of California. Let's see what happens to these two features. As I move into, into time, by Friday morning, this is the New Year's Eve, do the two storms go their separate ways, come in separately? different waves of snow or do they merge over the four corners there's an indication here this is Friday morning that there's a partial merger at least and you can see the low spinning up in parts of Colorado but this if this happens this would produce lots of wind and lots of snow significant snow with this final merger if this happens let me roll this in through there's Friday night look at that low beginning to spin up Saturday morning and there it is so there is at least a partial merger indicated here, and I've seen that in other data as well. So uh, that's the way I made my forecasts. I assumed that instead of just two waves, there would be at least one merger, at least a partial. Um, so I went for some of the larger totals, and I did that yesterday as well. If you watch this video, you saw some of those bigger totals. So here's what I'm looking at. Grand total, well, these are totals from today, if it snows all of today through the second. So from all of today through the second, you can see what I'm thinking. Potentially another 60 inches over Wolf Creek, another 45 in Crested Butte, um, another two feet plus over uh, Silverton. I look at snow mass, uh, about three feet Aspen snow mass, a couple of feet up there in the Wasatch, um, 30, 31 inches there, almost working on three feet there over Jackson, the Tetons and Grand Targhee. So, again, that assumes that there's a merger with these two storms at the uh, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day time frame across the four corners. I've got a couple of, I've got three plumes set up. So this is Loveland Ski Area, um, about 20 inches, I think, you've got coming between today and the second. And you can see how it accumulates a little bit each day. So you've got powder days every single day, all the way through the first of the new year. Um, and this assumes, again, that there is one larger storm at the end. Um, let's go with, uh, this is Jackson Hole right here. You've got about 30 inches coming between today and the second, third 
but most of it coming. You've got powder days basically today, tomorrow, 29, 30, 31, and 1. Um, the, biggest, the biggest powder production generation is uh, basically 29, 30, 31. But, um, so that's Jackson. I believe I've got one more here. Here we go. Here's Crested Butte. I think we could squeeze out 45 more inches. There was 8 last night. I think we could do another 8 today, tonight, overnight, and then potentially more and more and more. So all these are powder days. It snows each day. Um, with a big dump right there between the 30th and the 31st. So, uh, again, Crested Butte is reporting 50 inches in the last four days. If we get another 45, that puts us at 95 inches in, in as far as the grand total goes for this entire storm cycle. Um, would be absolutely incredible. Okay, one more item here, wind. There's a big spike in wind that comes with this, a jet streak essentially, that comes with this final storm system, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. As it's merging on the 30th and the 31st, you can see the wind spike as the jet streak rolls into Colorado, looking at winds of 40 to 90 miles an hour over the highest peaks, and potentially there again on the 31st, and then after the storm sort of moves through, for a second the winds, you get some dead air behind it, but that's gonna bring a lot of wind. Um, we'll finish up just one last look at the totals across the west from today through the second. Big powder ahead, guys. Gotta love this pattern. All these storm systems set up in this has been a major storm cycle. Thank you for tuning in here. I'll keep things updated. Take care.